Hi, my name is Karen Atwood, President of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. You know, I was trying to come up with some words that I think really describe Special Olympics, and I can think of a few. The first one that comes to mind is just unbounded joy. And you see that in the faces of all the athletes and their families and their friends. I think the other is a celebration. I think it really breaks down the barriers of prejudice. It celebrates the differences of these individuals. And it says that no matter what your disabilities may be, you can accomplish great things. At Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, we like to focus our resources around just a couple of things. Much of our investment is around making sure that we can invest and improve health and wellness. We also focus on things like diversity and inclusion. And those two things together is the epitome of what I think Special Olympics is all about. When I think about the children and the adults who are participating in Special Olympics, I think what a wonderful opportunity to really transform their lives. It really gives them the courage to live on their own, to apply for a new job, to meet and interact and make new friends where they may have been afraid to do that before. It really is about transforming lives. Tony is comfort. I think you can't look at Tony and not smile. Oh, his personality is infectious. He's very, very determined. And it doesn't take very long for you to understand that he's just like everyone else. He wants to be treated like everyone else. Tony has cerebral palsy, and it affects both his gross motor skills and his fine motor skills, which means he has a hard time using his legs, a hard time with, you know, maybe finger movements. If you're having a bad day, go pick Tony up. And, and travel around with him for a while because I mean, his smile is infectious, his laugh is definitely infectious. And I think some of the athletes wonder, what's he got going on in his life? Because I want to figure it out and be part of that. Why is he always laughing? Tony, everything in life ain't funny. <laughs> but I had to say one time to myself that not to be sad all the time because I used to feel like I didn't have a part in the world. So I would always be sad, but I would always laugh but you couldn't hardly always tell it if I was going through anything, not unless you really got to know me as a person. He's just got this never say die attitude. And he's not shy about telling his story because he grew up in East St. Louis. In my opinion, it was a difficult environment for somebody in a wheelchair because a lot of people, and I've heard Tony say this, they give up on you before they even know what you're about. You know, what does he have to offer? What does he have to give? And then you meet the man and, uh, and really your life's changed, it's transformed. Tony is a, a leader and a mentor to, to all of us. He's not only lived on his own for eight years, but also had tremendous influence on all of us to understand that we can do it too. Tony lives independently in an apartment setting that has become a addition to his family. He's not only the person that lives on the corner, but the person that knows everybody in the establishment makes everybody feel welcome. Once the landlord figured out that Tony was responsible and, and um, how things were gonna go, he allowed some of the other grasshoppers now to live here. Pretty much their lives revolve around Special Olympics, and you can tell in everything that they do with Special Olympics, being global messengers, sitting on the board. Tony is definitely an inspiration, I think, to other athletes as well as people in the community. He is a global messenger for Special Olympics Illinois, and I love to pick him up and take him to speaking events. He's also an ordained minister, and so he's very positive and upbeat in, um, in his delivery. Our board would be talking about strategic plans and about investments we can make in the future of the organization. And Tony stops the meeting and says, you know, some of my fellow athletes don't have tennis shoes. Um, they, I mean, that's true leadership and vision. The Special Olympics has done a whole lot of things for me to be able to speak up for myself, regardless of what might be going on, that I still have a voice in this world. I went to pick up Tony one day. Um, you know, his apartment's cleaner than my house, and uh, he really takes great pride in himself. He takes great pride in where he lives. And I think what it's shown is that individuals with disabilities can be tax-paying, really productive citizens within their community. It is kind of cool that they all live in their same complex and uh, they eat together, they go places together, they talk a lot of smack, um, <laughs> which is kind of neat. As he puts it, I'll walk and he rides. By me being in my motorized chair, I go, come on, <laughs> so it, it boosts them up. 
catching up. Yeah. Tony is very good at loosening someone up. A lot of times, people with disabilities, they build up a wall. And that wall has to slowly be broken down. When you live on your own, sometimes it does get lonely. But you have to put yourself out there, make friends, go out there and mingle with the public. Somebody asked me, uh, how do you shine your, uh, your gold on your silk? I said, with two faces. <laughs> That's all. Bye, boys. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> See you later. If there is something that I need, I know who to who to count on. I'm, I'm gonna try to say it the way Jim would know me to say it. Tony, you, you're my best bud. One very personal thing that happened with me is that uh, my father passed away, and I remember he spent one solid week over here just at night so I wasn't alone. Life goes on. Sometimes you're gonna take hits in life and you got to know how to deal with them. Special Olympics is really a worldwide movement, but it happens at the grassroots level. To break it down even further, it happens with one person. And you see people like Tony, and you know, he had a golf club in his hand down at Decatur. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm golfing. And you know, it's just that attitude that they can do anything they set their minds to. The Special Olympics oath is, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. And so I have to put my best foot forward and do the best that I can. If it's bowling or bocce or golf, I have to do the best that I can. Because I'm always gonna have somebody say, Tony, you can't do this. So I have to prove to myself that I can do this. And the main thing is just to have fun. And if we can just have fun, that's all the difference. One of the things that I know I've, I've learned is to not take life so seriously. Enjoy it, because it only comes once. And take your, your disability in stride. I do have cerebral palsy, but it does not stop me or any one of my teammates, whatever the intellectual disability might be. The future for Special Olympics Illinois is the next generation of athletes, but we still can't forget about the athletes that are getting older. And we want to provide the opportunity as long as they want to be involved. With a lot of funding cuts around the country and state funding, residential facilities going by the wayside, we need independent groups like parents. We need people like Stacy to say, I'm willing to take this on. I'm willing to help out. And this is something we can do. If I can just make a difference with one person to watch somebody else come out of their shell, it would be worth it all.